Back to the second half hour of the Factor on Censor. The grits have hit the fan. A shocking way to start the holiday break at Jack Yates High School. Now, this Sunday, students and alumni there learned Principal Tiffany Guillory was let go, fired, cut from the payroll. Here's a statement from HISD. Effective immediately, April Williams will serve as interim principal at Yates High School. Due to confidentiality laws, we cannot go into additional details regarding this situation. Please know that the district is committed to ensuring each student receives an effective education, and we will work to minimize and any disruption to education to the educational environment. Let's talk about it. JY alums, Jerry Monroe and Marcus Brooks here. So Marcus, when you learned that the principal, Guillory, was a lot of cut, fired, your thoughts on that? Uh, I was mad uh, because... Uh, First of all, what kind of relationship did she forge with you guys in the community, parents, alumni, and students? A, a very great relationship. I mean, she's all about the kids. She was like a mother figure to those kids in the building. You know, uh, Yakes have a lot of have-nots, and uh, kids need structure, and she was, like I said, a, a mom to them, you know. Uh, reached out, worked with the community, alumni, and, and everybody. But was she doing the educational job required by the board? Yes, I, I mean, I would have to say so. She uh, brought, uh, made the school become an IB school. Um, but thank you if I'm correct. And for those who don't know what that is, uh, what is that? Uh, inner Bachelor uh, High School. I think it's only five in HISD. Right, Moro? It's five? It's, yeah, International Baccalaureate. Yes, yes. I think it's only like five. Yes. And five. that's the, the pathway, the track to college. Yes. yes. And so, Jerry, what do you think went wrong here? What went wrong was Millet House. That's what Absolutely. went wrong. And for those who don't know, that's the superintendent. That's the superintendent. Okay. I mean, they, they cooking up a scheme. I'm not HISD. I know exactly what went on. And the, the thing about it is, is they're using her college and readiness numbers against her. That's some of the data that they use. But the problem is, is those numbers don't come out until the end of the school year. And those are the indicators of how many high school graduates will go to college. Exactly. exactly. So and they're saying those numbers are not high enough. They're not high enough. Mm -hmm. But those numbers came out in May. So if they weren't high enough, why you let her come back? They tried to get rid of her on September 30th. She was out on FMLA. And according to federal law, you shouldn't even contact this lady while she's out on FMLA. But I have a letter, I mean, I gave it to the Chronicle, be glad to give it to you, where they basically threatened her job and to remove her from the school. We stepped up and said, not in the middle of the semester. So I just feel like Millard felt that he couldn't get her the same way he did McDonough at, at Bel Air. He couldn't get her then, so let's come back and get her now. And so do we know this is him or this is this may be other administrators within the district because there are multiple administrators. The, the How do we know it's, it's a superintendent? The buck stops with the superintendent. Um, I mean, the bottom line is, is Millet House does not run the day-to-day -day of HISD. Mr. Cruz. Let's get that straight. The man that's calling all the shots is Rick Cruz, who doesn't have a clue what education should look like in anybody's school, whether it's black or white. So you look at the number of African-American schools that have lost their principals in the last two years, whatever those reasons may be, Yates, Madison, Worthing, uh, uh, North Forest, Wheatley, all our principals being removed. And this didn't happen until he showed up. So the bottom line is, is they want this school closed. They didn't give her the support she needed. She's been making wine out of water for three years. They gave her no additional money to help her, but yet they complain about what's not getting done. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the bottom line is you can't take a donkey to the Kentucky Derby, and that's what they wanted to do. Well, the school board and the trustees should be of the people. What are they saying about this? So, well, according to the, the way that the, the board operates, they can't say anything. They only have four job functions, and, and addressing administrative decisions is not one of the things that the board can do. So House is on his own to do what he's doing, and he's doing a great job, just like the people in North Carolina told me he would do, to screw up our school district. But it, it, here's the thing. Uh, prior to this, we had a private meeting, uh, Monroe, myself, the principal, and also the board member, uh, Ms. Allen, and uh, I explicitly asked this question. 
after they tried to remove her the first time, I was like, where are we at with her staying here? Are we good? They put explicitly said that House said that she's okay. We have to not worry. Because had we known this, we would have applied a full court press on him. But we, we were under the impression that it was good. He showed us up at Yakes on Friday and, and does this at 3 o'clock. You know, no, no, nothing to the community. It was a, a disrespectful thing to not only the community, but the kids, the alumni, everything, you know. Uh, I think it's disgraceful that a superintendent would lie and come disrupt these kids in the middle of the school because now our infrastructure is not strong. I, I think it's all created chaos to furthermore create the destruction of Jack Yakes because they know they can't walk in the door and close it. Yakes is more valuable to them as a real estate property than it is a school. And, and that's basically where we're at. You know, you take away the strong leadership, now what do you have? Instability. All right. And, and to top that off, he, they, they said that in that meeting. I saw him, the superintendent, at a community meeting about three or four days later and flat out asked him in his face. And he said, man, we're not moving Gillery. We're not moving, Guillory. And then you come back and you try to destroy this woman's reputation. Everybody loves Tiffany Guillory. Exactly. You know, everybody loves her. She's picked up award after award after award. But at the end of the day, you walk in, you have one of your henchmen walk in the office and say she's not fit to lead Jack A.C. High. Well, he's not fit to run the Houston mm -hmm. School District. Mm -hmm. All right. We thank you guys for joining us here on The Factor. And, of course, we always extend the invitation to the superintendent or administrators who want to come on and refute this or at least give their side of the story on the factor. Well, the